Crawfish, crayfish, call them what you will, they're tasty, sustainable to farm, and I'm with a trendsetter in aquaculture, Desmond Chow of Singapore Crawfish. We're at the stunning The CM Hotel in Bangkok, and you are watching Trends. Desmond, tell us about Singapore Crawfish. All right, so Singapore Crawfish is an aquatech company headquartered in Singapore. Um, of course, as the name suggests, we started with growing and rearing crawfish, and we eventually developed a technology to, re to reproduce crawfish sustainably and commercially. Of course, over the years, we have developed multiple technologies, and today we have grown beyond crawfish and into the aquaculture industry. What inspired you to move into this area of crawfish? What, why crawfish? I mean, many, many years ago, we were starting food production, especially agriculture. And we realized that, you know, at the bottom of the agriculture pyramid was these poor rice farmers. And we were thinking, how can we help alleviate poverty and help increase this income of the poor farmers? So we started multiple species, you know, plants, animals, crops. And after nine months of hard work, you know, we realized that crawfish was the winner. So today, by putting in crawfish into the party fields, these farmers can increase their income by 400%. Oh my goodness. And is there specific species that you're working with and farming, or is it any type of crawfish? Definitely. I mean, there are more than 640 species of crawfishes in the world today. Um, the most commonly known crawfish is the name, the scientific name of the most commonly known crawfish is the Procumbus clarki. And that is very famous in China, in the US. But we have found the champion of the crawfish that, is, that originates from Australia. Its scientific name is called Cherex quadricarinaceus, but it's more famously known as the red claw. Because, you know, the claw of the crawfish, it's red in color. So very interesting. Who's the big consumer of crawfish? Louisiana? Today, I would say it's China. China produces 1.8 billion kilos of crawfish, and today, their industry is worth roughly about $50 billion. Of course, it's followed by um, US and Europe, but we do see a sharp rising trend, especially in Asia and the African nations. Because of the rising middle class, they are demanding for a good and affordable source of protein which crawfish comes into play. Especially in countries like Asia, where we are tropical all year round, it's perfectly suitable for people to grow crawfish. Is it technically demanding to uh, farm crawfish? In fact, no. I, I would say that crawfish is one of the easiest crops to grow and to farm. I mean, they are very, very hardy. You see, they used to originate from swamps. So just imagine if they could survive and thrive in those dirty, swampy environments. You know, how well will they do if we put them in a cleaner environment? And because crawfish are scavengers, they eat everything and almost everything, right? In fact, I can put a crawfish in this room with us today. It can survive right here for three days without food and water. My farmers in Indonesia and Malaysia have literally dug a hole in their backyard, threw the crawfish in without any special equipment or technologies, and the crawfish has survived. Wow. So, so Singapore crawfish, you're headquartered in Singapore, yeah. but you mentioned there Indonesia and Malaysia. Yeah. So your business model is going to these traditional farming destinations. And are people having to move from, say, rice farming and switch to crawfish, or can you do a duo crop? Yes, so this is one of the methods that we employ. It's called multi-cropping. It's extremely sustainable. Let me give you an example. Most farmers in the past, or in fact today, are what we call monocroppers, which means that a rice farmer just farms rice, a fish farmer grows fish, a vegetable farmer grows vegetables. But for us, with our multi-cropping method, we can farm three crops on the same plot of land. Farming rice, fish and crawfish. Rice at the top, fishes in the middle, and crawfish at the bottom. 
and this creates a symbiotic biological system that's extremely beneficial to each crop. For example, the feces of the fish and the crawfish acts as a natural fertilizer for the plants, right? for the vegetables, for the paddy. At the same time, the plants absorbs the ammonia from the water, making the environment clean, a cleaner environment for the fish and the crawfish. And the fish and the crawfishes also feed on the insects in these party fields and ponds, which means there's less need for pesticides. Win-win. So if, if I'm a farmer, say, in the northeast of Thailand, yep. I'm currently farming rice on maybe 20 rye of land. Mm -hmm. How can I take on board crawfish? What's needed? Number one, I've got to actually find the baby crawfish mm -hmm. or eggs. I don't know how it works. Number two, I've got to feed them and somehow feed them the right uh, food. And number three, I've then got to start marketing. How on earth do I sell crawfish? So how, how are you trying to, or how are you addressing that? And is there like a, a big business model where you need a major investor to come on board to uh, introduce this into Thailand? How can we get Thailand on board Singapore crawfish? Okay. So there's two parts to, to answer your question. Number one, it's our business model. We are very, very sustainable. What we do is that we are a one-stop solution and we educate farmers for free. So today, any farmers who wants to learn how to grow crawfish, come on board Singapore Crawfish, we would teach you to grow crawfish for free. That's our sustainable angle, right? Of course, like I said, we are a one-stop solution. So when these farmers come on board, we provide them with the crawfish fries, the feed, the vitamins, the technologies, everything. So farmers, they don't have to worry where to get these supplies from. Best of all, we do have a buyback agreement in place. So these farmers, they don't even need to worry who to sell the crawfishes to after they have grown the crawfish. They can sell it back to Singapore Crawfish. So this is the first part to your question, where any farmer, any existing farmer or new aquapreneurs can come on board to start to grow crawfish. The second part of your question is where we are currently looking for investors and partners um, in both the private and public sector in different countries and for this instance in Thailand to build state-of-the-art crawfish hatcheries. One special thing about Singapore crawfish is that we have developed the world's only sustainable and commercial way to reproduce crawfish. In fact, people are calling us the Dyson of the crawfish industry. So we want to work with partners and investors to build mega state-of-the-art crawfish hatcheries so that we can have a stable and sustainable produce of crawfish babies to distribute to these farmers. I know nothing about crawfish farming, but I went online and just sort of Googled crawfish or crayfish, and it said that they're, as a species, they're cannibalistic. So if you're farming the, the babies, um, aren't the parents going to eat most of the babies? Yes, that's where, that's where we come in, right? So in crawfish, there's this thing called filial cannibalism, where the parents would eat the young. Right? And that is why a lot of farmers all around the world, they cannot successfully breed crawfish. Rearing crawfish is easy. Right? You put them in a pond, you give them food, they grow big naturally. That's the law of nature. Easy. But it's the reproduction. Right? So I can give you an example. In developing countries, what they do is they just throw crawfishes in a very big pond. Right? And when they harvest, they go male, female, male, female. Oh, this is pregnant. I'll keep it. Right? For more modern countries like America, like um, in Australia or even Israel, right, what they do is they do the egg stripping method. So they would take a fine tooth comb and they will comb out the eggs from the underbelly of the crawfish and they will put it in the incubation chamber. Right? And that's to prevent the mothers from eating the babies. But that's still quite unsustainable. I mean, you can do it for one crawfish or 10 or maybe 100. But what if you have 100,000 or like us, if you have 500,000 crawfishes, right? What do you do? Especially every time when you manhandle a pregnant female, you are exposing it to stress, to possible bacteria, infections, etc. That's why at Singapore Crawfish, we have developed an automated system where we can automatically and gently 
remove the babies and from the parents so that we can grow the babies in a safe and healthy environment. What on earth inspired you to go on this journey with crawfish? <laughs> uh, did you graduate in biology or aquaculture? In fact, no. In, in fact, I was a, a business lecturer in a couple of universities previously and uh, I was a businessman. But what got me into this industry is that we believe that food is the next big thing. I mean, if we look at the farmers today, most farmers today, they are in their 60s and 70s, which means in the next 10 years, they are most probably going to retire. Now, if we look at the younger generation, how many percent of the younger generation are into farming? Right? How many youngsters do you know are into farming? Most of the youngsters we know are into those sexy industries like you know, your Bitcoin, your finance, your bio, your engineering, which means, and, and, but we can see that the world population, the world's population is growing. Right? So in the next 10 years, where these farmers retire, who's going to provide food for our next generation? So food security, exactly. sustainability, and a crop that's easy to farm. But whilst you've got this Australian species that you say it grows quite large, what about flavour? It tastes amazing. It tastes amazing. Um, because of the feed because of the feed that we feed to this crawfish, um, they grow larger, their meat yields are more higher meat yield, and the taste of crawfish, it's similar in between, I would say. The taste of the crawfish is in between a lobster and a shrimp. Put it in your mouth, it melts instantly. <laughs> so, so when you have this business model and somebody comes into the Singapore crawfish uh, program, you're providing the fry, but the food is obviously quite important and that's where you say you've done research so it's not just commercially available fish food yes yes yeah. yes so crawfish is like i said earlier crawfishes are scavengers they eat everything so in fact today if you put fruits or vegetables or meat into the pond they most probably will eat it but for us at singapore crawfish we have spent the past five years researching one of the best food to feed the crawfish so five years back, we had 100 small little tanks in our laboratory and we put all these little crawfishes into these tanks. So what I told my students to do was that go to the market, you know, buy anything you like. And students are extremely creative. So what, they, what my students did was that they bought vegetables like your kailan, your lettuce, your carrot, your corn. Um, they bought fruits, your papaya, your pineapple, oranges and even durian. Yeah, and of course, different types of protein. Um, we had beef, we had chicken, we had pork, we had fish, etc. So we started testing with all these different ingredients. Certain ingredients we added in, the crawfish weren't interested. But certain ingredients that we added in, the crawfishes came out immediately. And certain ingredients that we threw in, the crawfishes didn't grow. In fact, they died. And certain ingredients that we threw in, our crawfishes grew exponentially. So today, by combining 12 special ingredients into our formula, our crawfishes grow fast, they grow large, and they are extremely healthy. So what's the way forward for Singapore crawfish to bring your model to Thailand? You're in Malaysia, you're in Indonesia. Those have been successful programs? Exactly. Right. So we have partnership farms, and we have contract farmers that work with us to grow crawfish, and we are planning to come into Thailand because Thailand has a long history of aquaculture. Very, very mature and exciting market. So I think Thailand would be one of the key markets to look out in Southeast Asia. We are planning to come into Thailand and today we are looking for partners and investors to help build our sustainable and technological high-tech crawfish hatchery. So if investors are looking at this episode and they want to get involved, sure. how do they contact you? Do you have a website? Sure. Just go to www.singaporecrawfish.com right? and uh, you can contact us there. Keep up the great work with the crawfish and food security in the future is so, so important and you seem to be on the right track there. You, uh, Desmond, it's great to meet with you and discuss this. Pleasure is mine. Yeah. Thank you, David. And thank you for watching this latest episode of Trends. See you next Friday.